Yeah, that worries me just a little bit. So today I wanted to bring you a video about a Civil Defense Geiger counter. This unit right here is a Civil Defense model CDV 700. This was built by the Victorine Instrument Company in 1961 and this unit was designed for the Civil Defense workers to use to help the general public understand the dangers of atomic weaponry. Now if you're looking into getting a Geiger counter I would highly recommend this one because this one's built so well, very tough, it's waterproof, shockproof and I swear you could drag it behind a Humvee and it would be all right. So first thing you notice on this unit is that it's got the Civil Defense logo right here on the side of the case and as you can see I also have some other things. This right here is an external speaker. Now this did not come with the unit. I'll explain that in a second. But we also have the manual. Now this did come with the Geiger counter when I purchased it. So what I want to do is give you a quick rundown of its operation, how to use it, how to maintain it, and what you should watch out for if you're going to buy one of these. So without further ado, let's get on with the video. So when you purchase a Civil Defense Geiger counter, this is the manual that you'll get. Right here is the instruction and maintenance manual for the radiological survey meter. So as you can see here, if we take a look, the Victory and Instrument Company is the people who made it, Cleveland, Ohio. And this is manufactured in 1961. So inside the manual, what you'll notice is that it'll give you a table that tells you all about the corrective maintenance, the description, operation, and variable things like that, such as finding replacement parts, things of that nature. So if we go through the manual, you'll notice that it has pictures showing you where the operational check source is, range switches, and things like that. And if we progress through the manual, it talks about its operation, shows you on the inside how to put batteries in it, how to do things like that, which we'll go over that. It's very simple. And it also tells you about replacing the Geiger Mueller tube itself and replacing various parts, which I've never had to replace anything. And uh, right here, it also shows you a circuit schematic. So if you ever break it, this is how you fix it. You can look at that schematic. And the book goes through a bunch of other things and where to find replacement parts if you ever can't find anything. So it's really handy to have this manual. So if you don't have one, I recommend get it because if the machine ever breaks or malfunctions, this manual will really help you out. So next, I think we should go into the operation of the actual Geiger counter. Now let's take a look at the probe. As you can see here, this is a very well-built probe, very tough, and it is a brass probe plated in nickel. So this way, if you decontaminate the probe, it's very easy, very safe, and that way it's not hard to decontaminate when you're through. So, you'll first notice that there are some slots cut into the top here. Now what this is for is this is for the uh, beta radiation to stop at this plate and not penetrate into the geiger Mueller tube. So in other words, if you don't want to detect beta radiation, close this probe here. As you can see, it is closed and only gamma will penetrate. However, should you want to detect beta, you can actually take this shield and twist it open. And now the geiger Mueller tube itself, which is that brown tube, is exposed. And now that that tube is exposed, you can detect uh, low energy beta, high energy beta, gamma, and everything else except alpha particles. This tube is not alpha sensitive, but it does a good job of detecting beta. So, if you want to change out the tube, it's very simple. You'll notice that there's a slot here and a slot here. So what we do is we shut this probe here to protect it. And if you ever need to change out the Geiger-Muller tube, it's really simple. You just grab a hold of that. Twist it open like this. As you can see, this thing is threaded. And we unthread this like so. And remove the sheath. And there you go. That right there is the actual Geiger-Muller tube itself. As you can see, there's a number on there. You can't really read it. I apologize. But if you uh, ever want to get a tube, I can put this in the description if you need one or just comment. This right here, the geiger Mueller tube, runs on 900 volts DC because it takes a large amount of current for this to operate. I mean a large amount of voltage too, so be very careful. Low current, but still high voltage. Could be dangerous. So if you ever need to replace this tube, you just pull it out, stick a new one in, and you're good to go. And then take your shield, place it over the top, and then screw it on firmly. And it's got seals in there to keep this thing watertight. It's also got springs in the top. So that if you drop this, it's spring mounted so you won't break it. So that's how the probe works. And now let's get into how the unit itself operates. Okay, here we have the unit taken apart. And as you'll notice, these are the battery trays. Right here, they hold 1.5 volt D-cell batteries. 
and there's four required to operate this unit. So there's been a lot of questions about how in the world do you put batteries in this thing. Well, it's very simple. For, for one, you just take off the case. There's two little straps right here. Remove those, and then you get the unit exposed. Now, step one is make sure that the unit is off. So we'll check our selector switch right here and make sure that it is in the off position. Because this is very important. This unit operates on 900 volts necessary to run vacuum tube, which happens to be the Geiger-Muller tube. So we always want to make sure it's off before we put batteries in it. First thing you'll notice is that there are these battery clamps on here. The first thing you want to do is take and squeeze the clamps right here and then remove them just like that. So squeeze it and remove it. Then you'll notice that the battery trays are exposed. So you want to find the polarity and insert the battery accordingly. And they'll all be the same direction once you find it. So there's that. There's that, and it requires all four to operate, and there you go. So then we would take our clip, place it back in here, squeeze it, put it in location, and there you go. Now that clip will hold those batteries in there so it doesn't fall out during operation. And so the next thing you do once you get your batteries in there is you'll take your unit, take your case, slide it in there, and make sure the O-rings are seated like that and then latch it shut and you'll be good to go. So now that we have our batteries installed and this unit is ready to operate, I want to talk about the phone jack that is included on the unit right here, what it's used for, and uh, where you can purchase a small speaker or headphones that will plug into this and what it's for. So as you're detecting radiation, every tick on the meter that indicates on the gauge will give you an audible click from this headphone out. And the reason that is is because there's an audio output capacitor on the inside that will drain every time the Geiger-Muller tube collects enough radiation. When that drain occurs, it sends the power through this and then into the frame, which is ground. So that way you can get an audible click every time you get a reading on the gauge. So first off, you can get a small speaker like this. These you can find on eBay. They're designed specifically for this Geiger counter. As you can see, it has that coax plug in there soldered in. And then it's got a speaker on the inside with a metal with a metal mesh over there to keep the dust out. Now this is two pieces. Obviously it pulls apart if you want to clean it. And then slides together and screws onto that headphone jack. So the first thing you'll notice is that there's a plug and a little brass ring. So all you want to do is just pull both of these off. Like so. Remove the little brass ring. Set it aside. Don't lose it because it will keep the dirt out. And then take your speaker and screw it on. Now when you get the speaker screwed on, don't put any pressure on it. Just tight like that. That's good enough. And I heard a little click when I turned it on because that was the capacitor discharging. So now that the speaker is installed, we can turn on our Geiger counter and you'll notice an audible click. So we'll turn on times one. You may hear something. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our probe open the beta shield and place our probe on the test source and then you should be able to hear audible clicks if you listen closely. So there you go. So those audible clicks are for every reading you see on the meter. Now of course the scale has nothing to do with the sound that you're hearing. The scale, you can adjust right here by adding resistors, which is all you're doing, is every time you uh, switch, the, switch to a new number, you're just adding a resistor to this gauge, so it'll give you a new scale multiplier for your instrument. So, when you hear the audible clicks, that's just a good sign that you're getting some radiation. As you can tell, we can hear background coming through here right now. So what we're going to do is turn this unit off, and then I'm going to show you some real-time radioactive things being tested with this. Okay, so what we have here is our unsuspecting test subject, the Coleman Lantern. So believe it or not, this device right here is radioactive, and we're about to prove it. So, I'm not going to go into detail as why. I may make a video about that later, but I just want to show you. So right here we have our instrument. We're going to open the probe, turn it on the lowest setting which is times one I'm gonna turn this over right here so you can hopefully see this instrument if it moves and I'm gonna take our probe 
And I'm going to drop it down inside there next to these lantern mantles and show you that these are extremely radioactive. So we're already getting some radiation. And I'll shut up so you can hear the uh, radiation. Listen. And we've pegged out. So if you saw, that needle stuck itself in the side of the case. And that was just with one pass. So I would start to be concerned about these if I were you. So I'm going to change the multiplier setting to times 10. So now we're not hundreds of counts per minute, but thousands. I would start to be concerned if I were you, if I was getting these kind of readings from a lantern. Yeah, that worries me just a little bit. Now, if I remove this and I put it on the times 100 setting, this is the most, this is the highest setting this Geiger counter can go to. So if we detect radiation still yet on this setting, it's dangerous. Let's drop this down in there again and see. Okay, we're getting some. I see that needle rising. So we're not getting too much on the times 100 setting. That's a good thing. That means we're not going to be killed instantly or anything by these lanterns. But you can still hear the sound. So if I put this thing back on the times 1 setting, you can see just how much radiation really is in there. See, we've already stuck. Who is texting me? Okay, so if we turn this machine off, you can clearly see that this unit is radioactive. So I would be cautious when you use one of these lanterns, because if you are burning these mantles, which are made from thorium, which is a radioactive material, it could release this radiation into the air and you could inhale it in your lungs, and I wouldn't want to do that. So this will conclude the video just to show you that this unit is in fact operational, 60, uh, 1961 and still working today. So if you would want to get one of these, I would really suggest you do it. They're a very nice Geiger counter. And as you can see, our most unsuspecting thing is radioactive. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, this is High Voltage Mayhem once again with another one of these silly videos about Geiger counters. So, if you want to like, subscribe, you know, do all that YouTube junk, you're welcome. And uh, hopefully I'll see you around my channel.